Hey guys, welcome back to another big innings. Of course, I'm on Patel. I'm joined by Nate Hayes as always, but we're in two separate areas uh, this today after today's games. Uh, I'm of course in Dallas. Nate, he's got he he's got family. He's on family duty right now, so he's got to be over there in North Carolina enjoying it from afar. But we got to make sure we get this post game content to you. And we had two games today, Nate and. Both maybe not the greatest of games, but huge implications on the line in both in both matches. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, these are the two biggest games of the tournament to this point because they're playoff games. One of them, well, one of them's the biggest <laughs> today, and that was the yeah, first I mean, one. It, you lose, you're done. It was the first one? Yeah, yeah. You lose, you're done. It was the eliminator between MI New York and the Washington Freedom. We had both selected the Washington Freedom, and if you stayed. Relevant with Big Innings Instagram, you know that we were incorrect. If you have not checked out Big Innings Instagram, make sure you go check it out. Uh, but we'll start with just how this match unfolded. The MI New York, they go and bat first. And, you know, we knew the question was going to be Monik Patel, Cheyenne Jane, yeah, how are they going to play? But also the word from the middle was no Kyron Pollard. So that means that Walt Brevis comes in and Hamad Azam sits for the likes of Steven Taylor. So right. I thought to, to a move that was interesting there. But they were trying to, I felt like just trying to beef up a batting lineup that loses one of its biggest pieces. Yeah, I think you're right. I think uh, Hamad Azam hasn't really clicked. Um, they, they've they rotated their team a lot more than probably any other team has. Uh, you know, some of these teams have stuck with it, like Washington. They stuck with Mukhtar Ahmed all this time, whether even though he hasn't really come through. Uh, but but New York's not afraid to shuffle their team around. And I think if you get that, if if you start the, the whole league off that way, if that's kind of what your, your team understands, it doesn't really hurt you to keep doing it. Uh, you know, I think there's some places where you have to you have to think about the chemistry of your team and you have to think about the morale. Sure. And if you're dropping people, putting them in all the time, that can hurt morale. But it hasn't it hasn't really seemed to hurt the momentum of this MI team, MI New York team. No, absolutely. And for Washington, they did make a change today. Um, one of their first changes to an 11. Justin Dill comes in for our buddy Dane Pete. So they go with an extra pace option, how they read the wicket. And Enrique, as he wins the toss, he chooses to bowl first, just not really knowing what it's going to do. And again, we mentioned Monik Patel, Shine Jane Gear. They were going to be, you know, the reason we felt that MI would have a really good score on the board or why they would struggle because when that top partnership had been playing well, it allowed. Budan and Pollard to kind of sit back and then accelerate the and play the game they want to play the game. When they get out early, when they're not able to score and put pressure on that middle order, then they had to play more run a ball and they're not able to be as free flowing. Um, and it didn't start out the way they would have wanted to. Uh, I actually met up with um, you know Sana, uh, who is always commenting <laughs> on our post, and he said she said today is that was their fifth. Um, wedding anniversary, which was Ooh. awesome. So, so she goes, if uh, Cheyenne scores a 50, it's because of me. If he doesn't, then it, I had nothing to do with it. I thought that was the quote of the day. Uh, but he played well, 25 off of 27. Didn't really look incomplete, Nick, but he was able to stick in there. But Morgan yeah. Patel goes pretty quickly off kind of a faulty run out, gets Nicholas Budden in there early, and then Saurabh Nethervalker gets Nicholas Budden, and then the game kind of unravels from there. Yeah, and honestly, it looked like, it really did look like their top order put them in a massive hole. Uh, you know, as as the flow of the game went, there was no flow in that first in that top order for the uh, first innings for for New York. Um, you're talking about what what would they have 30 31 runs from 47 balls, but the, off the bat from that from that trio, and then Brevis comes in and my goodness, he uh, he 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 kind of changed the game he definitely changed the game he made it a game it didn't look like it was going to be a contest that the comment i was watching on the on the tv the commentators were saying this was even lower than the start that los An that los angeles had with their lowest scoring game and they were the you know bottom seeded team in the in the league so you know it didn't look good at all for new york it looked like washington was going to run away with this game yeah again the Wald Brevis hadn't been in the best of forms either in this tournament. Remember when he was opening the batting, struggled opening the batting, and it was part of the reason why 
you know, you take him out, and obviously Rashid Khan was going to come in, but it made it really easy to take Brevis out of the lineup. He comes in, puts his hands up, but you mentioned no flow to this innings. Talk about after 11 overs, they were 53 for three. After 12, 66 for three. And the 12th overs when they hit their first six. And you're talking about a lineup that features Nicholas Budron, DeWald Brevis, Tim David, and went went to the 12th over before they were able to get a six. But once Brevis found his footing, he was able to take off and really start to explode, hitting sixes with ease. Him and Tim David built a partnership uh, that lasted from, you know, the 10th over to the 16th over, six over partnership that got them from about 47 for three to 116 for four. So it was able to carry them through that stage and allow them to tee off. And um, they were able to put 140 runs, 141 runs on the board. We got to see our buddy Steven Taylor put nice six over cover, uh, which was great to see him do. But 141, it was respectable. It wasn't a runaway score, but because DeWald Brevis did what he did, the 57 off 41 in a fantastic innings, it put MI in a position where they had runs on the board. Yeah, runs on the board in in a big game is always is always something. You always have to respect that. And and you know, when 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 Dill got Tim David LBW and then uh Janssen got uh Brevis caught by House. Yeah. It really looked like to me at that point, okay, cool. The threat's gone for Washington. Uh they can kind of close this out now, get through the batting because yes, with without their captain uh, the the team batting doesn't look as 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 explosive. Obviously, sure. you still have Visa, you still have Stephen Taylor, you still have Rashid Khan, and Stephen Taylor came in and gave them fifteen. Turned out to be very crucial runs. Runs, yeah, no, absolutely. And with the ball for Washington, we mentioned they. I I feel like they won the first innings because Marco Johnston. Look oh. at his stat line: four overs, twelve runs, a wicket yeah. to his name. Justin Dill, four overs, twenty five runs, a wicket. Right. Neth Walker. Two two wickets with the same stat line there, and Akil Hussein had a wicket as well. So, you know, the only really Anrik Norkia was the most was one of the more expensive bowlers. He was the one that everyone took a liking to, and Enriquez only bowled the one over for thirteen. But this was a day that was owned by the Washington bowlers in the first innings. And so, when you fast forward to that second innings, you said, "Man, if Chelsea and Short are able to just to get a start going, it's going to be a quick, easy trip to the challenger for Washington." Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, we 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 said one we wondered why um Dane Pete was left out of this team, but when Justin Dill puts up the numbers, he did four overs, 25 runs, a wicket, and he actually had two runouts in the game. Uh the one that went off his foot, <laughs> and then the uh-huh. the early one, which actually probably benefited MI New York um with Manung Patel getting out. He was 5 from 10 at the moment and you know, yeah. that got Nick Porin in, which I thought, I remember thinking, oh, oh wow, here comes Porin. They might have wanted to keep him out for a little while. But it turns out Porin was extremely slow today, too. Um, but, yeah, that the bowling from, from Washington seemed like, it's this seemed like a win. Going into, the, going into the intermission, it seemed like a win to me. And, um, yeah, but am I New York? As somebody pointed out on Twitter, they bowl so much overseas. They so many of their overseas yeah. players that are that are staples in that team are bowlers, and of course we also have Nash Kenjigi. Yeah, yeah, and to be fair, even you talked about how Washington looked in front of the game going into the, the intermission through even ten overs of that second inning, it felt like they were still ahead of the game. They were sixty for two. Um, hundred. You know, Andres yeah. Kaus got a start. Matthew yeah. Short. Um, he got himself a star before he was undone by Trent Bolt. And then, you know, Nosh was able to take the wicket of Kelsey. And we felt that left arm matchup was going to be interesting to see how, you know, Kelsey was able to battle that, unable to win on that occasion. Um, but to me, it was the 11th over that changed the game. It was overboard by David Visa. And it was all, you know, the catalyst of it was the Nosh Kenji run out of Mukhtar Ahmed. We talked about it, how Nosh will affect the game in three phases. He it's not he's not just a bowler. He's a guy who's a tremendous in the field, right? Tremendous with the ball and then with the bat can give you some handy runs. And yeah. he showed it in the field today. He was able to get that run on Mukhtar Ahmed. And then a couple of deliveries later, David Visa gets Moses Enriquez. And I felt that was the first time that MI felt that they were in front of the game and they never let that feeling go. No, you're right. Absolutely. When yeah, it, look we need to update how we determine who's an MVP of a game. Who's the player of the game? Because yes, I get it. Brevis put up those runs on the board that if they didn't have that, 
they would have lost. But how often, you know, 57 for, from, from 40 run, oh, one runs. Okay, that's a good game. Nosh turned the game around with that run out. And then also with the ball, the players that he, the batters that he got out, when he got Obis Pinar out, it, it seemed like at that point, it seemed like, oh, this is not looking good for Washington. This it looks like they're yeah. going to lose this game now. Yeah, I mean, that that yeah, moment, and- it seemed like that was the end. I agree that 11th over of Visa and then 12th, Nosh comes right back, takes Obis. And then from there, it's, you know, Gil Hussain, it's Marco Janssen. And they're sort of they're kind of in it. And you don't feel Washington's out of it yet. There's not right. enough runs on the board for them to feel out of it. Right. But then to me, the 16th over kind of sealed the deal when Aysan Adil went for two runs in a single over with Marco Janssen trying to play and basically over the top of mid-off, uh, yeah. in, in between mid-off and cover, and unable to do so on every every occasion. He right. only goes, you know, what, what for three runs on on in that over, and that to me was kind yeah. of the final touches, the cherry yeah. on top, where it was like, right. okay, this is this is the game. Oh, I agree with you because at that point in the game, at that point in the innings, Asen Adil is the guy you have to go after. You got to go have, after. You Asen. had Bolt with an over, yeah. Rashid had an over, yeah, um, and you knew you were going to get basically two overs, almost three overs of Asen Adil at that point. Yeah, you know you're getting two from Asen, Asen Adil. You have to go after him. And and I feel like maybe the lack of experience um, against him uh, from, from Marco Janssen didn't work in his favor, clearly. But um, but Janssen did come around later on, gave gave some excitement to the innings, hit it pumped a yeah. couple of sixes into the into the he side did. Street. He did. It was it was about 25 from the last six. So he felt like okay, yeah. something could happen. It was, and, I think, you know, I think it was they, 20, 26 from the last twenty-two nine or tw- something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then and twenty-two was, from the last six, and yeah. Nosh was bowling, so you never know a spinner at the end. So it wasn't right. like Washington was ever out of this game. And I think if you're Washington, that's the one thing that's going to be disappointing to you is that you were, even with everything that went wrong, you still had an opportunity. Twenty-two from six, right? Yeah. Um, it, it, you were ahead of this game the whole way through, and just a couple of key moments didn't go your way. Right. And that ended up costing you the game. Yeah, too many wickets. Too many wickets had fallen. It, uh, you know, it, it, when by the time they were in that 19th over, if they had two fewer wickets, you got to bet on Washington. And, but they, but they never got that partnership, right? You they never, when you talk about a Brevis and Tim David, yeah. when wickets fell, they held it together for about six overs. They never had yeah. that six-over partnership, which Washington had been doing all tournament long. Think about back yeah. in Church Street. Obis and Moses, how many times were they those two in the middle together for long periods of time? Or Glenn Phillips and Moses Enriquez, they were in the yeah. middle for long periods of time, sure. you know, kind of consolidating and then allowing Obis and Akil and Janssen to come in, Dane to come in and hit the ball down the ground. Right. They didn't get that today. And that's it. that was a huge difference in the game. No, they didn't get that. And after the second wicket partnership, they didn't really have any real what you could call a partnership. So, yeah. you know, hey, we were wrong. But how fun was it to watch Nosh Kenjige take that game over? An yeah. important game like Love. this. This is a guy who hasn't been in the USA T20 side since 2018, for God's sake. Yeah, the- He's, he, he did play, I think, 32 of the ODIs, of the 36 ODIs. Yeah. Um, He's played so- a lot of the ODI matches but they haven't yeah. – I don't know why they're not taking him T20. You know, he, He's a guy who's, who just proves it every single time he's out there. Yeah, and you look at his his stats in minor league. He gets he's been better every season. His his batting strike rate, you know, went up by something like seventy percent this last season. I mean, like a, a massive jump. So we haven't really seen his bat too much in in major league cricket. He's actually a a minus batter as far as you know the 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 stats sure. go. But you know that's in very limited chances. And obviously, when you bat at the at the end of the order. It's a trickier job. It's a it's it's honestly a trickier job. So, but man, I, I mean, hats off to to Nosh Kanjige. I, I don't know if he's going to get the award for top domestic, the Bart King Trophy. He, he should be in the he should be in the conversation for it at the very. He least. should be in the conversation statistically. When you just look at batting and bowling, he might be third, fourth place. But when it comes to him taking wickets Impact. in big moments. In the field, cat and big catches, you know, um, with the ball. Has there been right a bit a better big game player in the league aside from Clausen? You know, yeah, no, he's right up there in the conversation, and we'll get to see him and the rest of MI New York to, well today by the time you see this, um, <laughs> in the challenger, uh, that and they'll go and 
take on well the loser of the qualifier. And so we'll go ahead and talk about this between Seattle and the Texas Super Kings. The Texas Super Kings, they won the toss. They like to bat first. Um, Fab just wanted to get some runs on the board. And again, a big question for us when we were picking this was, what's Faf going to, you know, what's his form like? And then what's, what's the team? Is DJ Bravo back? Is Daniel Samson? Is Jim right. Cotier out? Uh, they go with the same team. No DJ Bravo. Dan- and you you called this the same team. Daniel Sams, Gerald Cotier. Um, you know, those are that's the 11 they've gone with. And it looked like maybe Faf and Conway were going to get things going early on. And then right. Imad Asim is just doing what Imad Asim has done throughout the tournament, taking wickets in the power play. Every single power play, which he's bold in, which is every one the Seattle's played, he has taken a wicket. And he takes a wicket of Faf Duplessis in the last ball of the third over. And you can just feel the stadium drop. You can see the disappointment on Faf. He's like, man, I just have no luck right now. And Imad Asim, it, it's just become a habit at this point for him. It's it's ridiculous how good he's been. You look at his economy, and he's taking wickets with with a very very good economy. I think one of the best economies in the league, if not the best. And when you combine that with his high wicket hauls, it's it's ridiculous how good Ahmad Wasim has been for this team. How it, how amazing it's turned out that they've had him. Now this is a team Seattle that lost six of their overseas by the time the season started. Six of their original yeah. guys they they had pegged. For, for overseas, they lost um, because of other tournaments or whatever reason. And um, so they've had to go and pick up other guys. And Mod will see him here. Just absolutely brilliant. One of the top, maybe the top bowler in the entire competition. He's he's right up there with it. And another guy who's right up there is Cameron Gannon. Because uh, yeah. he gets Ke- uh, Devin Conway right there at the end of the power play. And then you're like, oh boy, this is this is a game. Because now it's Cody Chetty. And, uh, you know, Milan Kumar in there. And then Milan Kumar goes pretty quickly after that. And it's just things are starting to unravel. Harmeet Singh bowled tremendously well. And you never saw, kind of like what we saw with Washington, that partnership for the Texas Super Kings build. Anytime they were kind of starting to get things going, a wicket would fall. And they just lost wickets in regular intervals. And you got to give a lot of credit to the Seattle Bowling. And uh, AJ Ty was terrific, took a wicket in almost every over which he bowled, all but one over he took a wicket. Um, yeah, Gannon was great, Harmeet Singh was great given his full quarter uh, today. Uh, Pretorius was fantastic, even Wayne Parnell came in and he was really good with the ball, took wickets. So, this sure. is a team from a bowling perspective that just bowled the lights out, they were terrific. And I honestly thought in the 16th over when um, Wayne Parnell drops David Miller, I said, Could this be a game changing moment? Andrew Tyson yep. says, don't worry, three balls later, gets that wicket. So I thought so, too. Team, yep. Yeah, this is a team that never panicked, never went away from what they do, uh, very much like the Seattle minor league team, the Thunderbolts, where they, they have a formula, they're going to stick to the formula, they trust the formula, and the formula's working because Texas only managed 126 runs in that first innings. Yeah, and I think it was Tim Lowell, I think, I think, in the Discord, who was joking that Millen Kamar and Cody Chetty at the time looked like they were batting – waiting for the other one to get out so they could bat with David Miller, which is kind of seemed <laughs> it kind of seemed like they were um, because neither of them was ex- especially effective or dangerous. Um, and in that position that they were at, you know, they needed to be a little bit more dangerous than they were, but then boom, everybody gets out. <laughs> so yeah, and, and the whole thing collapsed. Yeah. The whole thing collapsed when Sam's and Savage were in, I thought, okay, I think we yeah. between the two of these guys who are very pretty similar in, in terms of like their ability to just smash the ball out, you know, out the ground. Um, I thought, OK, we could get to 140 here. We could get to 140, 145, and then it's a game, you know, and, and then it's a game. So but it didn't get that far. Uh, unfortunately, Calvin was run out, um, hesitated a little bit uh, turning to go back. And uh, I think you know he'll 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 be upset with himself there because he was looking really good. It looked like Calvin was going to go on to score maybe thirty runs in this thing. Yeah, he looked he looked really good. And again, it was just throughout the innings, wickets fell at the wrong times for the Texas Super Kings, and Seattle just kept pouncing, never let up really any of the pressure. The one drop in the field, other than that, you know everything kind of worked actually the right he, way. He got out on the fifth ball of the. 19th over he wasn't going to score 30 runs so but but yeah (laughs) he wasn't going to score 30 but he if he was in there for that final over you never know what things could have been like you can get another 10 on the board 
Yeah, you, you yeah. could get some and, more and, runs. Yeah. And Mosin like, actually fair, looked pretty good. Yeah. No, Mosin did look good. I thought he, you know, when he hit it, I thought maybe that's going to go and it just didn't. But even with 10 more runs on the board, I, Seattle, just the way they played today, I'm not sure it would have really mattered because Quindicock finally had a Quindicock oh. innings. We were waiting for it. Noman Amor goes early the first time really this tournament, and Noman Amor hasn't gone to 20 or 30 runs. And Quindicock says, Don't worry, Noman, you can have your night off. Because he, I'm going to score 88 off 50 with 10 fours and four sixes. And Shanjay Surya says, don't worry, I'll score 31 off 34 and just support you. Uh, and really, Texas, to me, the moment this game was lost, because they kept him in check, fifth over, 32 for one at, at the end of it. And then the sixth over, Faf drops Shehan Jai Surya. And then in that moment, yeah. I said, you know what, this is this is the match. I think yeah. has that if that wicket falls, now you're Texas, you have two in the power play, you're going to put some pressure on this team, and then you can start to maybe go at the, you know, this batting lineup might be not be as deep. Right. But once you drop Shea on, I just felt he's not giving you another chance. It's all, yeah. it's basically a run of all. I, I, th- I, to me, I wrote it down. I said that drop of Shea was going to be, that was it. That was the nail in the coffin. And it turned out to be just that as Quintacock again goes wild. Shanjai Surreal was fantastic. And they chased this thing down in 16 overs and, uh, Finished off rather anticlimactically off a wide from Mitchell Sandner that got a lot of boos from the crowd, but uh, it was an all around <laughs> just dominant display from Seattle. Absolutely. I mean, look, we finally see Quentin DeCock. Now, you know, they weren't chasing very much, but you get this sense now. You see Quentin DeCock scoring 88 runs, right? We could have seen him score 94 if that last one wasn't a wide. You know, he probably would have <laughs> gone for that. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, we see she- Shehan come in and play a responsible innings, rotate strike, get get the get the hot hand on on strike, and my goodness! So the domestics, first of all, the domestic batting for the Orcas has been very good this this season. Um, as it, you know, probably the best in in the league, at least in the top five, uh, at least in the top five batters in that regard. So, but seeing Quentin scoring the way he is. Knowing that they're going to chase this down and they're going to win this game, and and uh, Clawson hasn't even stepped in the middle yet. <laughs> yep. So that's the scary part about this team. Yeah, yeah, it's it's very scary. So when you've got Norman and Shehan, who probably between the two of them are going to give you fifty runs, you know, uh, yep. combined in the game or close to it. In this case, they didn't need to, but but you're you're talking forty to fifty runs from your two domestics at the top of the order. If Quentin the De- cock has just an average Quentin the cock game, you're talking forty to eighty runs, <laughs> and then <laughs> and then Clausen comes in, and his strike rate is right around two hundred right now for the whole. And he season. can take on any spitter in the world. You know what I mean? It's like on any if spitter. you take on New York, you know Russian yeah. Khan takes such a fear off a lot of players. Frederick Clausen, this is a guy who is the best player to spin right now in the world, it seems like. And yeah, if Russian it could be Russian Khan bowling, it could be anybody bowling. You know, it doesn't yeah. matter who the who the spinner is, he's gonna feel very confident in his ability to take it on. And yeah. why not? He's taking everybody on and taking them downtown. hundred percent. And and not just that, but like what do you do? What do you do to Clausen? Do you do you pitch it up at him? No, he's gonna he's gonna cream it. You, you, you know, you have to you had to find a tough length for him, which is hard to do because he goes back on the back foot. Anything that's 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 not full, he's going on the back foot, and he's back, been yeah. he's been fantastic with it. And you got to get one to skid on, yeah, yeah. And and it's it's an interesting thing with the, with his physique. Uh, I think it it really. I mean, he's found a way to use his physique really well against spinners. His his arms are kind of low, you know, and and so when he goes on that back foot. He can play. He can. He can just lift it. He can. Well, yeah, and he can get. He can play the lower balls that most people can't yeah. play on the back foot that are his height. Sure. So, so it's right. it's interesting watching him play. Um, but yeah, it's it's uh. W- let's talk now about who's going to give Seattle a bigger a bigger problem in the final sure. because we have MI New York versus TSK in the. Well, yeah. the semifinal now. Yeah, I mean, I think we've seen Quinn score both games against Texas. And I I do think MI New York pros a little bit tougher of a challenge because I think you have two spinners who are bowling really well right now and and they can bowl in the power play, they can bowl in the middle, they can bowl the death. So you have 
variation of where they're going to come in. They're not going to come in at specific times. When you look at Texas and their spinners, it's seventh over, eighth over, you know, seven to kind of 14 is when their spinners are going to bowl. Before that, they don't bowl spinners in the power play and they don't seem to bowl any in the death either. So, you know, with Seattle, they're able to play more matchups where it feels like Texas is more, this is kind of the flow of the game and how we're going to play it. Um, and then when I also look at MI, I, I look at a team that Trent Bold is bowling phenomenally at the death. And if you have to deal with him at the death and the way he's bowling at the open with the way Eslan Adil has come into form, yeah. it's a lot to deal with consistently. So th- for that reason, I think MI pose a little bit more of a challenge um, just in terms of on paper to a Seattle than maybe a T- TSK does. Yeah, I think it's the sec- the second spinner option they have, and then the potential third spinner if they stick with Steven Taylor. You know, yeah, because Taylor. we haven't seen a whole lot of Steven Taylor's bowling, but you and I both know it's he's a very, very good bowler. And very effective, he doesn't yeah. he doesn't shy away from from the moment either. You know, he yeah. he's is with the ball, he's he's very good at taking wickets and he's and he's good at, at keeping the the economy down. Um so he, I think New York has a lot of good options and also let's see who they play. You know, they they've shuffled their team around a lot. It's it's pretty unpredictable who they're gonna play. In fact, I'm feeling better all the time about the fact that we predicted that they would play Nosh and Rashid Khan together. You know, together. yeah. There, well, some people thought that was a silly idea, but but really, I mean, especially against Washington, it's perfect. But do you do that again? Do you do that if you if in in the upcoming game against Texas, does Nosh and Rashid play? I think it's crazy right now to tr- think about taking Nosh out of the team. Yeah, I mean, because w- the way you the way I look at it is. Okay, you take Nash out. Who do you bring in? Hamad Azam. Okay, Hamad right. Azam, or you know, Hamad Azam hasn't played too well. So do you go a Jesse Singh, another pace bowler? You could. Who, who you haven't tried all tournament long? Do you go with the Slade Van Slade to get another bat involved? Right. I just think Nash brings so much on every like in every phase of the game. He's yeah. playing at a really high level, and he he's not just a one trick pony where he will he has to bowl a power play or he has to bowl yeah. seven through fourteen. If you want an over in power play, he'll give you an over power play. If you want an over in the middle, he'll give you that. If you want him to bowl death, he'll do that. So, right. And he's not a fifth bowling option, right? You have plenty of options to cycle yeah. through. So mm-hmm. you can you can utilize him in that way. So I right. think for Nosh, I think he should be in this 11. And I think that he's going to be very vital. in you know, if, if they move on, I think he's going to play another big part in it. But, uh, Nate, before we wrap things up, well, we got our predictions one and one for uh, today. Well, one and one. what do you got for the challenger? What do you got the challenger? You got Texas or do you got New York? Who do you have going to meet Seattle in the final? Interestingly, Texas, the pattern, they, they haven't won two in a row. They haven't lost two in a row. They win, they lose, yeah. they win, they lose, they win, they lose. they lose. This is what they're at right now. So the next, the next logical thing, if you follow that pattern, is to win. However, Mumbai, well, not Mumbai, Mumbai Indians, New York. <laughs> Am I New York? My New York. Um, it, New York seems to have just put so many things together in the last few games. Yeah. And they came into Morrisville one and two. They've been incredibly good since then. They've been a very, very good team. Uh, I think it's going to come down to once again for New York. How do they do, do batting in the power play? Um, I agree. Yeah. And, and with, Unfortunately for Texas, they have the same exact question. What are they going to do in the power play? Batting. And I think right now, New York has done a better job of dealing with that problem when they fail than Texas has. So I'm going to lean towards New York. I'm picking New York. Yeah, I know. I like the pick. I think I think you're right in the middle order aspect of it, right? They they feel like they've had more they they've dealt with that situation better. Um I think I think I think it's a very interesting conversation because I think Koshi is going to be really effective in that power play. I think they're going to bowl him, and I think yeah. he could get through Monon Cortel, who right now doesn't seem to be in the best nick, or get through a Cheyenne Jay and Gear, right? Uh, because that's just what he does. And I think if he does that relatively quickly, he can put you on the back foot pretty quickly. And you know, I I, th- I think I'm going to agree with you though that the fact of I trust the middle order right now of New York more than I trust the middle order of tsk right now because david miller yeah he had a good first game but you know didn't really play well in the next um and hasn't really clicked daniel sams um but with that being said you know even with uh, the middle order i still feeling well i i'm gonna i'm just gonna pick texas i think 
I think I'm going to go with the logic. Mm-hmm. I'm going. I'm going with the underdog. Um, I do think that the underdog going into this matchup because, and I, but I think it's because of what the domestics are going to do. I think Rusty Theron and Calvin Savage are going to have good games, and I think I Calvin's think going to be able to contribute. They both they been. Bold, they've both been good. Yeah. Yeah, and and they bowled in the tougher part where there really wasn't much to play for in right. the in you know, today's match, but they bowled well. They showed different types of balls and created problems. I thought Calvin looked really good today. He looked and I wouldn't be surprised if tomorrow, if he's able to do something with the ball that's really special. Yeah, um, I think Coach is going to take two early wickets, and I think Calvin's going to keep the pace on. Um, and then I, I don't know. I just think Sam's or Oof, Miller. Man. Or yeah. I think I think one of those guys is just going to pull something out the hat, and I'm going to go with logic of win loss win loss. Maybe they part it up with the win. Wouldn't be surprised to see MI take it, but you know what? Well, to be fun, we're going to go with the Texas Super Kicks. Hey, this sets us up too because if you win tomorrow, yeah. we're even, and then the finals we're are even. final, right? So we're doing it for a little bit of the content as well, right? We got to we got to yeah. mix it up uh, here and there, but it should be a great game of cricket that we get to see. Uh, the challenger is what they're calling it. I'm really excited for it to see who ends up playing Seattle in the final. Nate, we'll get you down here for the final. We'll probably have one more of these shows before you get back here, but I'm super excited to get you back in oh. Dallas, but enjoy some extra days up in North Carolina. Maybe get some sleep. Maybe not. It is about one <laughs> thirty. So when we're recording this, so I will see if you get any sleep, but we appreciate you guys for watching for myself, for Nate. Thank you for joining us on another big innings.